In today's video, I want to cover a Thunderbolt 4 mini dock from Anchor. I've always been impressed with the Anchor products, and I've been looking for a Thunderbolt dock for my M1 and my Razer laptop. And I was anxious to test this one out, as it was in a price range that was affordable and had just the right amount of features that I needed. If you're interested in how this performed, then stick around for the rest of this video. And don't forget to hit the like if you find this useful. Please subscribe and hit the notifications icon so you'll know when there's new content. So I've had a higher cool docking station for a while now, and for the most part it works really well. It has all the ports to run multi-monitors, network card, SD cards, and several USB ports as well as 100 watts of power delivery for either of my laptops. What I found however is buying a docking station with a similar number of ports was really expensive, and I found that I really didn't use a lot of them. I was typically only using one monitor with my dock, and either used a 2.5 or 5 gigabit USB network adapter over the built-in one as the performance wasn't really what I needed and a wireless keyboard and mouse combo. As I typically copy the contents or my footage from my SD cards to my NAS, having the built-in SD card wasn't that important to me and I knew that I could always get an external SD card if I ever needed one. My objective here was pretty simple and all I wanted was a small Thunderbolt 3 or 4 that had power delivery and was flexible enough to use whatever devices I need at a reasonable price. So I decided to try the Anchor Thunderbolt 4 Mini Dock. So let's go through the hardware and then hook it up and run some tests and check for any device compatibility concerns. If we look at the front of the unit, we have a Thunderbolt 4 upstream port that connects to your laptop and it's capable of delivering 85 watts of charging power to your laptop. Next to that, we have a USB 3 port Type A and a couple of LEDs for power and status. Flipping to the back of the unit, we have a DC power jack where we can attach the power brick, and next to that we find an on and off power switch. The next three ports are actually the same, and they're all Thunderbolt 4 ports, which are backwards compatible to Thunderbolt 3 as well as USB-C. The three ports are identical, and they're capable of sharing the 40 gigabit per second and 15 watts of power amongst the three ports. In other words, I can have a power output of 10 watts on one port, 3 on the other, and 2 on the other, or I can have 15 watts coming out of one port. This also holds true for the 40 gigabit per second Thunderbolt speed. That can either pump out of one port or share it across all three. And this is pretty typical of any of these type of docking stations since you only have one 40 gigabit coming into the laptop. Any one of the ports can handle an 8K monitor at 30 hertz, or 5K on, on Mac OS, or dual monitors at 4K 60Hz. That does not apply to the M1 since it can only support one external monitor. So let's go through the hardware starting with the power brick. This is the 100 watt power brick that comes with the device and supplies all the power to your laptop as well as provides power for the USB and Thunderbolt ports. I've attached the Sabrent 5 gigabit network adapter to the dock which I use to get better performance. Because this is a Thunderbolt port, you can plug in virtually any network adapter you want. You can use the 10 gigabit Thunderbolt adapter, 5 gigabit, 2.5 gigabit, or 1 gigabit USB adapter. It'll all work perfectly in the device. Next we have the HDMI to USB-C adapter, which is a really low cost way of attaching an external monitor to a Thunderbolt or USB-C port. They're also available in DisplayPort as well. I'll add links to these cables if you need more information. As you can see, this is driving my external monitor without any issues, and I've also tested this on a 55-inch and 80-inch 4K TV without any issues there as well. Lastly is a USB-C external SSD enclosure. For testing, I'm using the iNeo USB enclosure with a Samsung Evo SSD in it. This is certainly not the fastest drive in the world, but it'll work in demonstrating the functionality and compatibility of this dock. As this is not a Thunderbolt drive, it'll be limited to the speeds of the USB interface. Based on the benchmark speed of the enclosure, it's not being hindered by the dock at all. And it's running as fast as it does when it's connected directly to the laptop. Looking at the setup, we can see that everything is, that's attached is working correctly. It's charging the laptop. And if you look at the network preferences, you can see that the 5 gigabit network adapter is identified and active. I tried many different devices and everything I plugged into it just worked perfectly. 
I actually like the fact that it has three Thunderbolt ports rather than a variety of other ports. Many of the docking stations try to pack everything into one device, but the reality is most of the time you don't really need a lot of those extra ports. For me, I like the fact that I can use virtually any kind of adapter and mix and match what I need into the device. I like that I can add my USB drive, my Thunderbolt drive, a 10 gigabit adapter, or virtually any other adapter I want. I use the front USB port for a wireless keyboard and mouse combo, and when it comes down to it, I really only need a few items, so there's really no need to pay $350 to $400 to get a bunch of extra ports that I may not use, but instead I get the flexibility to do what I want. Obviously, everyone's needs might be a little different, and you may not want to use adapters for things like monitors, but unless you spend a lot of money, you're not going to get three Thunderbolt ports on a device. You'll be limited to the performance of the devices you get with the docking station. At the other end of the spectrum is a traditional USB docking station, which are really inexpensive and work really well for mobile use. However, you're limited to, the, to sharing the 10 gigabit USB-C port. These are great to carry around, and I have a bunch of them, but for a home base workstation, Thunderbolt with power delivery is the only way to go. Anyway, that's about all for today's video, and I'll leave some affiliate links below in case you want to check out any of the items that we talked about today. Please give this a like if you found it useful, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notifications so you'll be notified when there's new content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.